Welcome to Biomedical Engineers TV video. In this video, we will look into FACO machines or FACO emulsification. Let's look into where it all began. Charles David Kelman was an American ophthalmologist, surgeon, inventor, known as the father of FACO emulsification. He developed many of the medical devices, instruments, implant lenses, and techniques used in cataract surgery. In the early 1960s, he began the use of cryosurgery to remove cataracts and repair retinal detachments. Cryosurgery for cataracts remained in heavy use until 1978, when FACO emulsification, a procedure Kelman also developed in 1967, became the modern standard treatment. So what is FACO emulsification? FACO emulsification is the most common cataract surgery technique performed. Cataract surgery is used to restore vision in patients whose vision has become cloudy from cataracts, a clouding of the eye's lens. The lens is located behind the iris. It is responsible for focusing light on the retina and for producing clear, sharp images. The lens has the ability to change shape, known as accommodation. As the eyes age, however, the lens hardens and loses its ability to accommodate. The entire lens is contained within a lens capsule. The light that would normally be focused by the lens is scattered around because of the cloudiness, so vision is no longer clear and sharp. Cataracts are usually due to progressive accumulation of cloudy, insoluble lens proteins and not an accumulation of dead cells. Let's look into components of a FACO machine. The major components of the FACO machines are fluid bag, pinch valve, peristatic pump, handpiece, foot switch, and waste can. First, the fluid bag. They're usually gravity fed. A bottle of BSS is hung above the patient and gravity provides the input pressure to maintain eye volume during the surgery. In contrast, the Centurion's active fluidic system is designed to maintain the target pressure inside the eye. It does this by having a variable, rather than static, input pressure. To make that possible, the bag of fluid is inserted into the machine and acted upon by pressure plates that are able to change the pressure in the bag very rapidly in response to feedback from sensors in both the irrigation and aspiration paths within the cassette. There's also a pressure sensor on the bag itself. Second Pinch Valve The pinch valve is a solenoid-operated device that opens and closes tubes to control the flow of liquids and gases. In pinch valves, there are no dead zones or dead volumes where fluid can become trapped. Only the inside of the tubing comes into contact with the fluid. A pinch valve is a low-cost device that works in the same way as a tap. It has an on-off switch for turning off, allowing, or controlling the flow of any medium that passes through it. Third is peristatic pump. FACO machine pumps work mainly on two different ways to control fluidics. Flow-based, or peristaltic, and vacuum-based, or venturi. Peristaltic pumps use rollers to create flow by compressing the tube and moving the fluid in one direction. Vacuum is formed depending on flow restriction, and the maximum preset vacuum levels can only be achieved with full occlusion of the tip. Venturi pumps use vacuum to create flow. The fourth component is the handpiece. The FACO handpiece is an ultrasonic handpiece designed to facilitate removal of the natural lens during cataract surgery. Using longitudinal vibrations, it moves at an ultrasonic frequency to emulsify the cataract and aspirate the debris through the hollow needle. The fifth component is the foot switch. FACO emulsification is a form of cataract surgery that uses a foot switch to control the irrigation, aspiration, and ultrasonic power delivery to a probe that breaks up and removes a cataract from your eye. What are the basic controls in FACO machine? The first control is IOP control. The FACO emulsification procedure was broken down into eight stages, and mean IOP was calculated across each stage. Intraocular pressure was measured during bimanual micro FACO through two different incision sizes and with and without the cruise control, star surgical, connected to the aspiration line. Second control is vacuum. The difference in fluid pressure among two points, negative pressure measured in milliliters of mercury, MMHG, Vacuum determines how well, once occluded on the FACO tip, nuclear material will be held to the tip, holding power. Third is aspiration flow. The aspiration flow pulls material toward the FACO tip and the ultrasound movement of the FACO tip pushes material away. Vacuum holds nuclear fragments on the FACO tip. Surgeons can optimize their settings to improve this balance. Generally, low flow slows down intraocular events while high flow speeds them up. This was the simplified explanation of FACO machines. 
These types of machines have a lot of different types of operation and controls, which we will look at into a different video. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.